Good afternoon, everyone. Seven years worth of rain fell in 12 hours in Chile, one of the driest places on the planet. And if you can believe, this is a bridge. You can see exactly where this is on the South American map with this massive, massive rainstorm. Also in the West Pacific, the largest Pacific typhoon ever recorded in March. And to explain all of this, cosmic rays coming in with a decreased magnetic field on the Earth. Also a quick look to see what happened during the Little Ice Age when there were higher cosmic rays and more lower clouds across the planet. This is Super Typhoon Maysak, and as you can see, it's the strongest West Pacific Basin typhoon ever recorded in history in the month of April. A track of where it's going into the Philippines. A little bit closer view here. This is off the Taiwan Weather Bureau's website. I left a link below so you can jump around in there. They have looping images. The average number of tropical storms and typhoons in the West Pacific. January, we've already had one typhoon. February, we've already had a typhoon. And in March, there's already been two typhoons this year as well. This was the one that was in the beginning of March and March 13th. Copiapo City in Chile and the Atacama region desert area received seven years worth of rain in 12 hours. I'm just going to roll through pictures here that I found off of the social media, uh, some videos of newscasts so you can see some of these absolutely amazing force of nature pictures. Also, this is the driest place on our planet in the Atacama Desert. They only get 1.7 millimeters of rain per year, yet you can see the type of deluge that came down. It has something to do with the atmospheric compression. We've seen massive hailstorms in Bogota, Colombia, dropping two feet of hail last week. And three weeks before that, in Quito, exactly on the equator, they received one meter three feet deep of hail. This just goes along with the massive precipitation coming out of the skies. And if you thought this was a one-off event, this is in the Atacama Desert again on December 15th. They had rainstorms going through there which created these amazing rainbows. A quick look at the South American map. I circled in red where these unusual precipitation events, whether hail or record-breaking rain, 12 to 15 times the normal. And the reason I circled that on the map for you is we're going to take a look into Spensmark. He's the one who did the cloud mystery. You might want to take a look at the, the connection between cosmic rays in the solar cycle and the low level cloud cover that seems to have an inverse depending on the magnetic strength of the sun and the earth. When we take a look back at the monsoon flow in the little ice age, I would draw your attention to South America. Notice the W1 circle. That's exactly where this flood occurred. If you see where the blue line that looks like a wave going across the equatorial region, that's exactly where Bogota and Quito, both with those massive hailstorms, occurred. And you might say, oh, that's strange. What do you mean about cosmic rays? But this is from NASA. In 2009, they cited a 19% increase in cosmic rays, the most they'd seen in the last 50 years. And when we start having these massive events of meters of hail on the equator, Seven years worth of rain dropped in a single location in the driest place on our planet. In Queensland, Australia, this is the size of the hail that was coming out of the sky. Those are inches and centimeters on the ruler there. You might ask yourself, is there really a connection between the cosmic rays? And if there is, these storms are going to be more intense next year. The electrical storms are going to be more intense. There's going to be deeper hail, heavier rains, more record-breaking snows, all related to lower cloud cover as more cosmic rays come in. Now here's an overlay of what the cycles have looked like going back to 1810. The darker red line in the center is where we are right now. We're going to be trending down from this point, so you can expect more low cloud cover, and you be the judge what you think might happen from that point. And another quick look. This is from the Taiwan Weather Bureau. They also have a geological survey earthquake monitor. This will show you the earthquakes around Taiwan. And I always notice a very large difference between what the USGS puts out as the magnitude compared to what the Taiwan Geological Survey does. If you want the real numbers, you'd need to jump right in here. They don't downgrade like the USGS. 
And I did want to leave you with the Arctic ice extent for March 26th. Many people are saying that the Arctic is going into a death spiral and there's less ice this year. Well, here's the actual numbers from the National Snow and Ice Data Center, nsidc.org. As you can clearly see, there's more ice than 2005, 6, 7, and 2011. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.